is Grade 12, University of Physics, Unit 5, Modern Physics, Lesson 11, the Standard Model of Particle Physics, Bubble Chamber Example. So let's take this bubble chamber, which is a proton soup, lots of protons not moving very much, and then we fire a bunch of kaons into it. But what are kaons? What charge do they have? Do they have a charge? It looks like as they move through the bubble chamber, they're being slightly curved to the right. What could make charged particles curve? Well, a magnetic field can. And we have a magnetic field going into the screen represented by all these X's. So if we know the direction of the magnetic field and the velocity of the kaons, we could figure out what charge it is since we know it's being curved or there's a force on those kaons to the right. So let's check our right hand rule. If we use our right hand, put our thumb in the direction of the velocity, up, index finger in the direction of magnetic field into the screen, our middle finger shows that the force it must feel would be to the left if it were a positively charged particle. But it's not feeling a force to the left, it's feeling a force to the right. So let's check our left hand rule. In this case, again, our thumb points in the velocity of the kaons. Our index finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, and our middle finger points in the direction that the force it would feel, which in this case is to the right. And yes, our kaons are feeling a force to the right, so our kaons are negatively charged. Now let's look right here. Something's happening here. Now it could be one of two options. Our kaon could have decayed into a bunch of other particles, because kaons don't last very long anyways or it could have collided with one of the protons inside this bubble chamber. So which is it? Well, let's look at charge conservation. Now if it decayed, we have a negative particle decaying into, here we have two tracks, one curving to the right and one curving to the left. So you would have a negative particle decay into a negative and a positive. This breaks charge conservation so we don't have a decay. But what if it collided with a proton? So we have a negative colliding with a proton, so a negative and a positive, which then produce a negative and a positive? Yes, this works. Charge is conserved. So here we have a collision with a proton. Let's look at another example. Right here we seem to have something produce two tracks. Now these two tracks are moving upwards and left, so they had some initial momentum. Now our bubble chamber can only show tracks for charged particles. So perhaps there was a neutral particle that either collided with a proton or decayed. Which is it? Let's check charge conservation again. If it collided with a proton, we have a neutral charge colliding with a positive charge and that's gonna produce a positive and a negative charge? No, this doesn't obey charge conservation. So what if it was a decay? You have a neutral particle decaying into a negative and a positive charge. That has a net charge of zero. So yes, charge is being conserved here. We have a neutral particle decaying. But wait a minute, but where did this neutral particle come from in the first place? Let's go back to our first example. Was momentum conserved here? If we look closely, we have an initial momentum close to vertical and then two other particles moving slightly to the right. This wouldn't obey momentum conservation. There must have been something else going to the left. And since we cannot detect these neutral particles, we can't see their tracks, Due to momentum conservation, we say there must have been something going to the left, whether it was a neutral particle or maybe even a photon. And this photon decayed later, right at this point, into a positive and negative particle. Let's try some more examples. So this one negative particle, later, something happened here. Its path was sort of kinked off to the right. Did it hit something? or did it decay? Think of charge conservation. I'll give you a moment. In this case, 
must have decayed. A negative particle produces another negative particle. But since momentum must be conserved, it must have produced another neutral particle. It's the only way for charge to be conserved. It could not have hit a proton because we don't have any positive charges after the so-called collision. So we have a decay. And if we look at momentum conservation, we can see a very similar decay coming from that neutral particle up at the next point. Now, our last point, we can see, again, a kink in the path. A negative particle, suddenly, it looks like it hit something and moved off to the left. But did it? Was it a collision or was it decay? Think of charge conservation again. I'll give you a moment. So in this case, again, due to charge conservation, it must have been a decay. Continue to practice on your next example.